Hello, class 10th. First of all, I would like to thank that girl who suggested me that, so please, little slow, speak little slow. I will try my best. So starting with the last lecture, in the last lecture, we have discussed about the equilibrium in bodies and the principle of movement and some numericals too. I hope you have solved all the numericals. If not, please inform me, give me the problems, practice problem and numerical number two. Today we will talk about the center of gravity, uniform circular motion, centripetal force and centrifugal force. So starting with the first topic, center of gravity. Take the example of the scale. In the last lecture I said, suppose uh, the weight of this scale is acting downward. The weight of the scale is acting downward. It is lying on my hand because of the weight is counterbalance the normal reaction. Okay, now I'm putting at two fingers in scale. So at this time we said that the weight of all the masses, all the particles in this direction is counterbalanced all the weights in this direction by the moment of force. But the weights are acting for every molecule in downward direction for all the particles in downward direction. And it is lying on my finger because it is counterbalanced by the normal reaction acting in upward direction. So we can say uh, the whole weight is like acting at this only place. So we can also say the definition says the center of gravity of a body is a point inside a body, not at the surface. It is a point inside the body at which the whole weight of the body is supposed to act. Remember my point that the center of gravity lies inside the body, not at the surface. Taking the another example, this box, the weight is acting on downward direction and the normal reaction is acting in the upward direction. Now this time again the same weight and the normal reaction. So I will say the center of gravity is somewhere here. No, the center of gravity always lies inside the body at the center, somewhere inside the body. So center of gravity defines that it is the point inside the body where whole weight of the body is supposed to act. Now, the center of gravity of different different type of bodies means there must be two types, the regular shape and irregular shape. First of all, let's talk about the parallelogram. <clears throat> the parallelogram has center of gravity where its diagonal intersect. If you write, if you write the geometric center, it's incorrect. So the perfect answer for this is at the intersection point of the diagonal. Second one is the triangle like this. Triangle may be isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, yeah, skeleton triangle. But what you will write for the center of gravity? You must write the intersection point of its median. And the third one means suppose the cylinder is there. So where you will write for the cylinder, you must write at the midpoint of the axis of the cylinder. Uh, you want to ask something? This you want to say? Yes, exactly. The center of gravity ring. Where will be the center of gravity of this ring? Yes, at the center. For this type of shaped body, your answer is common geometric center. Where so, shapes like ring, disc, sphere, these type of shaped body, can, you can answer the center of gravity lies at geometric center. Say this ring, you will write at geometric center, where it will be at the exact midpoint, at the center. But this center of gravity is outside the body. And the second example is every L-shaped body has center of gravity outside the body. So in the examination, you will be asked to write the position of center of gravity of any particular shape. So you have seen the geometric center is not the answer for every body. Okay. It is only for a ring, disc and sphere. Now our new topic is uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion means, let's see the diagram first. So we will discuss about uniform circular motion for that. 
think about a scenario let there are five positions a b c d e suppose any vehicle is starting with the zero meter per second initial speed after one second it attains five meter per second after again one second 10 meter again after one second 15 meter per second and after again one second it becomes 20 meter per second i'm talking the speed not the velocity speed means it's without direction this is information is without its direction so speed is increasing in every second how much five meter per second the speed of this vehicle is increasing by five meter per second in every second see here so we can say the speed of an object we can say car we can say vehicle we can say object so the speed of an object is increasing by 5 meter per second in every second i said this is speed not the direction so now let it is moving in a com continue in the same direction that is let any direction i'm talking that let it is north now we can say this direction is consist constant direction constant and the body and the vehicle is increasing its speed now we are having the speed and the direction so you must know that the velocity is equal to speed plus direction now i am giving the information of this vehicle that the speed and the direction also so we can say now not the speed we will say what so we have seen what the velocity now because at this time there was no direction now i'm informing i am informing the direction so we will say the velocity of an object is increasing by 5 meter per second in every second and by the definition and by the definition we know that the acceleration is what change in velocity with time and what is the change in velocity here 5 meter per second in every second so 5 meter per second upon 1 second gives what acceleration 5 meter per second square so we conclude that if there is a change in speed and fixed direction so there is accelerated motion means direction may be constant if the change in speed is there direction is constant then accelerated motion again think the same scenario the car is increasing its speed and the direction is also changing sometimes suppose it is changing north then south then east then west it is changing its direction at this time we can write here now the change in speed plus change in direction still gives acceleration because there is a change in speed so if there is a change in speed means give it will give some number here some value here then it will give the gives the acceleration so changing in speed is must change in speed whether the direction is changing or not there will be accelerated motion now think about the new scenario the body is moving from a to b to c to d to e after every second see there is no change in the speed i'm talking the speed not the uh, not the velocity there is no change in speed so we can say the speed is constant in this case while in this case the speed was increasing in every second so you can see 0 5 10 15 20 but in this case the speed is constant so according to that equation the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity upon time so can you say that is there any acceleration or you can say is this the accelerated motion you will ask for the direction okay now now i'm giving you the direction to the direction suppose the direction is fixed say north direction means the vehicle is moving in the north direction means the speed is constant and the direction is also constant so you will say that there is a velocity but the value of the velocity is zero because there is no increase no change in there so now here now according to the velocity is equal to speed plus direction we know that so here velocity is equal to 5 meter per second the speed plus direction is north so you will say velocity is equal to 5 meter per second in north and which is constant neither the speed is changing nor the direction is changing then what you will say 
So tell me, according to the equation, acceleration is equal to change in velocity upon time. Is there any change in the velocity? Velocity means speed and direction. Neither the speed is changing nor the direction. So there is no change in velocity. Means here it was changing with 5. You can take any two position means 10 minus 5 gives 5. 15 minus 10 gives 5. 20 minus 15 gives 5. Every time you will get 5. But here subtract anyone. You will get what zero so on putting the value the zero meter per second upon one second gives you zero meter per second square this is what the acceleration so what you will see now you come to know about that if the speed is fixed direction is fixed then there is no acceleration that is not accelerated motion why we are discussing this because we are studying the topic uniform circular motion so, so you must understand what First thing, if the change in the speed is there and direction is fixed, so accelerated motion. If the change in the speed is there, changing direction, so accelerated motion. And if the speed is fixed, direction is fixed, so no acceleration. Means you can say in common, what you can say in common, if there will be a change in speed, then you will get some value here, then only be the accelerated motion. But no, one more scenario is still there. Let's see. Uh, you can say that this is the same scenario like here the speed is constant same scenario but I am changing that it is changing the direction at every second means suppose it was turning in north then it is turning in east then it is turning to south then it is turning to west so every second the speed is constant but the direction is changing since we know that what Velocity is the sum of speed and direction. So if speed is changing, so velocity is changing. If the speed is fixed but direction is changing, means the velocity is changing. At this time, you will not get any value. The difference will be zero here. But since the direction is changing, still this will be saying that this is having the accelerated motion. So speed is constant here but the direction is changing. The speed plus direction is called velocity. So velocity is changing. If the velocity will change, the acceleration will be there. So that will be called accelerated motion. I know you are saying that if the value comes to zero, why we are saying the accelerated motion? Yes, the value of acceleration comes to zero, but the direction is changing. So in this case, this is the special case that is called uniform circle motion. What says that if a body is performing any type of motion, where the speed is constant, the direction is variable. So that will be accelerated motion. In that case, the acceleration will be uniform. So keep remember these four lines. Change in speed, direction is fixed, accelerated motion. Change in speed, change in direction, still accelerated motion. Speed is fixed, direction is also fixed, no acceleration. But if speed is fixed, but direction is changing, so that will be accelerated motion. So this is the special case when the speed is constant and the direction remains changing. So at this time, this type of accelerated motion is called uniform circular motion. What uniform circular motion? In examination, it is used to ask, is it possible to have accelerated motion with this constant speed? You will answer, yes, it is possible only in uniform circular motion. So you have seen the speed is constant and the direction is continuously changing how is it possible let's see example say this is the stone i'm whirling this stone about this center so you can see the speed of this stone is constant but when the stone is here the motion has a direction in this direction the direction of motion at this point is in this direction the direction of motion at this point is in this direction and the direction at this point is in this direction means at every point the stone is changing its direction so this is the only case where the speed can be constant and the direction can const continuously changing so we will say the uniform circular motion now we are moving to our next topic the centripetal force in this example we have seen the stone is rolling around a center but why the stone is moving on the circular path 
why not it is going away you can see when the stone is here i put my thumb to pull the stone in this direction when the stone is here i pull this inside in this direction when the stone is here i pull this in this direction and when the stone is here i pull this in this direction means wherever this stone is i put the opposite force to make it revolve at a constant radius so the force that we are applying inside toward the center the force which we are applying toward the center to keep that stone revolving at a constant radius this force is called centripetal force this force always acts toward the center and at the right angle to the direction of motion this is centripetal force so see let's example that this is the stone which is revolving around the center i'm applying a force this f to keep the stone on this path and this is the direction of motion so this force is centripetal force which is taking the stone inside to keep at this a constant radius and this is the direction so suppose this is my hand here it is my hand so we can say the centripetal force always acts on what on stone toward the center centripetal force always acts on the stone that force tends thus uh, keeps the uh, um, and the angle between the centripetal force and the direction is right angle and this centripetal force acts on stone has equation centripetal force f is equal to mv square upon r but this is not in your syllabus and the examples of the centripetal force are like uh, the revolving the revolution of electron about the nucleus the revolution of planets around the sun and many more examples are there but one more point we are applying one force to keep this stone on a constant radius in a circular path so we are applying a force in this direction means we can say this is the action of force so when there where there is an action there is equal and opposite reaction means if there is centripetal force so one reactionary force must be there so so that reactionary force is called centrifugal force which acts outside the circle away it, it, it want to take the stone outside the circle and which acts on hand so remember it the centripetal force acts on the stone and the centrifugal force acts on the hand so now the example of this centrifugal force the examples are so the definition becomes the external the fictitious not external the fictitious force which acts on the stone to take it away from the circular path is called centrifugal force it doesn't mean that centrifugal force acts on stone the centrifugal force acts on hand and centripetal force acts on the stone if the force is taking the stone outside at that time you can say this is centrifugal but in general what you will write centripetal working on inside on the stone and centrifugal working outside on the hand and the examples now examples are in the washing machine the dryer follows the centrifugal force to take the take the water out it throws the water outside out the what uh, clothes and the example like uh, extracting butter from the cream an example when the car is struck in the mud when the wheel rotates it throws out the mud in the tangential direction outside the circular path so these are the example of centrifugal force i still say centripetal on the stone towards center centrifugal on hand outside the circle so i am ending up this chapter and keep giving the suggestions and your problems